Hey, how's it going? I'm Ron. I'm Zach. We're from the band Wide Track, and we're here today on the 24th episode of Influences. And as you know, Halloween is just around the corner, and Halloween is our favorite holiday of the year. And so, today's episode is a little bit different. We are going to list off our top 10 favorite horror movies. And, uh, you know, these kind of lists are always up for debate and discussion. And uh, ideally, what they do is they bring out other people's lists, and you get to look at other people's lists and say, oh, I forgot about that one. And, uh, oh, that's a good one there. Yeah, should have included that. So that's why we like doing that and just exploring, talking about this stuff. Anyhow, this will be in no particular order because. It's just so... How could we? Yeah, it's so could, unfair. Yeah, yeah. So... Starting off our list, we have... Well, some may not call this horror movie. So we, should we go 10 to 1? Oh, we're going 10 to 1. Yeah. 10 to 1. What other way are you going to do? But okay, 10 to again, 1. Again, in no particular order. All right. um, starting off the list, um, some may not call this a horror movie, but um, to a three-year-old, it is very much a horror movie. Uh, Jaws. Jaws definitely a horror movie. There's enough blood in that movie to uh, to just justify it being a horror movie. Um, what's your earliest memories of this movie, Zach? Nightmares, when I was three. Because yeah. Because I yeah. said, man, I, I really love sharks. I love them. Sharks are so neat. And my father said to me, I can fix that. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's take a look at this movie. And I, I got a little bit of trouble from the family, but you know what? I seem to remember when uh, there's a scene in Jaws where, spoiler alert, Jaws eats a man. Uh, the character Quint, uh, he's sliding down the boat and he lands in Jaws' mouth. And Jaws takes a great big bite out of him and drags him into the sea. And I'm like, ah, shoot. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have shown Zach this movie. He's a little young. Young Zachary looks over at me and says, boy, that shark sure was hungry. So, just goes to show you, you know, kids are uh, maybe not as, always as apt to get scared at things as the rest of us. So, Jaws, directed by Steven Spielberg, uh, starring Roy Schneider and Richard Dreyfuss and Robert Shaw. Um, fantastic, classic, that's number 10. What do you what do you got for uh... number nine? <clears throat> the prequel to a title on the list that'll be a little bit further down the line: um, Manhunter slash Red Dragon, because they're <clears throat> kind of the same thing. Yes, the prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Uh, the original came out, I believe, in 1987, which uh, was a uh, cult classic really um, starring William Peterson the guy who's also known for CSI um, and uh, damn the director is slipping my mind right now but he things such as these are not important yeah, yeah. Uh, both versions of the movie are great yeah there's a, the, the remake which came out uh, I think in 2002 starring Anthony Hopkins and Edward Norton and Ray Fiennes and that was called Red Dragon, as was the original book. Um, both are great. It's it's real difficult to pick which one's better. And uh, well, one interesting thing is Manhunter, the the original one, um, uh, has a different Hannibal Lecter, and it's the first appearance of Hannibal Lecter. Even predates Anthony Hopkins Hannibal Lecter, done by um, Brian. Oh God, the names are slipping my mind today. Anyway. Check out Manhunter, and then check out Red Dragon, and would love to hear what you think. Which one do you like better? To us, we can't we can't pick. So next on the list, but again, in no particular order, we have a very popular Halloween movie. Halloween. Titled Halloween. Classic. Arguably the best soundtrack to to movie to cinema of all time. Um, Trent Reznor and uh, his partner Atticus, I, 
pretty Not cool. Trent Reznor. Yeah, they just remade it, and it's really good. Check that out. Um, the movie itself is wonderful. Um, I believe it was one of the very first, if not the first, appearance of Jamie Lee Curtis when she was really young. Um, and this one predates the 80s horror genre, which I believe it came out in 1978. So there's a big difference to me personally with the 70s horror movies and the 80s horror movies. Wes Craven kind of brought in this whole era of 80s horror movies where the killer quips off a really quick wisecrack while he's killing, and, and it just got kind of campy. And I just, uh, I don't like that, and the and the and the horror movies started getting really like torture porn, and just really look you know colorful like a music video. You go back to the '70s horror stuff, and they're scary because it's like wow, this looks like a little lower budget, and it just looks got more sense of realism about it. Anyhow, Halloween, unqualified classic. Uh, John Carpenter in his prime, he was just getting started. Next on the list is... Number seven? Okay. Number six on our list is a horror movie that isn't easily called a horror movie, but because it is very terrifying. The Cell. The Cell. The most recent movie, I believe, with the exception of Red Dragon, which is a remake, but the most recent original movie. On this list. On this list. Uh, this one stars Vince Vaughn, Jennifer Lopez and uh, Vincent D'Onofrio plays a magnificent uh, a couple characters in this movie. This is a great film. The director, once again, I guess I should have listed the names of the directors of some of these. The, the names always escape me. Brian, we need you. Anyhow, um, the cinematography and the set designs of this movie are amazing just amazing and the story is very original um, it's about a serial killer who goes into a coma and he's got his last victim um, tucked away in his little serial killer lair and so scientists uh, led by Jennifer Lopez have a technology where they can enter the brain of a person and so they go into this killer's mind to see if they can find where he's keeping this girl because time is running out for her. Uh, it's, it's just, it's a great film. Um, the Cell, check it out. Next on our list is another classic horror movie, Alien. Alien, in space, no one can hear you scream. That was the tagline for the movie when it came out. Uh, 70. Nine, I believe. It is not important. Yeah. Well, some people it is. It's me. Anyhow, Alien. Ridley Scott. It's a classic. Pretty damn terrifying movie. Um, any any special thing? You saw that movie. Did it scare the living heck out of you? Or? Yes. Yeah. Moving on now. Well, we're, we're really climbing up there. We have The Shining. The Shining. Jack Nicholson and my all-time favorite director Stanley Kubrick. Shelley Duvall uh, is worth mentioning as well and, and the young gentleman in that movie who never went on to really do much and I don't even know his name but he's great in it too. This was a Stephen King novel that Stanley Kubrick said hey thanks for the rights I'm gonna go make my own movie about it. Stephen King is uh, famous for saying he hates the movie, he hates the way that Stanley Kubrick just took creative license with it but it's Stanley Kubrick so you know what you're are you gonna, gonna say? Get, you're not gonna get better than that. Stephen Sorry, King dude. remade the movie back in the 90s and it's the Stanley Kubrick classic, The Shining. Next on our list is one that I saw very, very recently. Um, the Howling. The Howling. I can't think of any wolf puns. Yeah. I can't think of any puns, really, but The Howling. It's kind of a lesser known actors. You kind of might recognize them a little bit if you see them. The mom from E.T. <laughs> She's a, the star. Um, 
but it's got the coolest wolf transformation and uh, the movie is freaking scary it's just it's about a werewolf well it's about no more werewolves spoilers. yeah it's about werewolves and uh, werewolves are but spooky. it's but it's done well the storyline is done pretty well and it's regarded by many as the best werewolf movie yet made personally i'm still waiting for someone to make the definitive werewolf movie but uh until then until then the howling shall hold that crown. some people say american werewolf in london but you know number I, three on our list yeah. silence of the lambs silence of the lambs uh, won the academy award how many horror movies win the academy award it's got to be that much better and uh and it is it, you have been living anywhere near civilization for the last 20 years or so. Um, you know that this movie's great. Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, and uh, Buffalo Bill. Classic. Now I know you said the 70s horror movies had the um, real gritty and lower budget uh, scary feeling that you preferred over the 80s, but let me ask you this. Did you ever consider the 60s? Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock, one of my heroes, one of my all-time heroes in life. Psycho is the perfect movie. A lot of people criticize the ending of it where they where the psychiatrist explains why he's the psycho. I love that part. I think it's great. I think it's the perfect movie all the way through. And uh, if you if you're not familiar with it, I would be curious to, to hear if you figure out the uh, the twist in the movie. So, um, the shower scene. Um, Class. Classic. It's classic movie. Psycho is top of the list for me, really. And now for the final entry on our list. The final entry. The Thing. The Thing. John Carpenter, the only director who has two movies uh, in this list. The Thing. What is it about the thing, Zach? Well, it is how. There are quite a few characters in that movie, and even though there are quite a few characters in that movie, they all seem very different from one another and very individual, which gives it a whole lot more depth, uh, along with the fact that there's no real fancy bells and whistles um, throughout the movie. Um, and it looks, you know, about as realistic as you're going to get for that time. Um, I just got to say it's so immersive. I really like the idea and of... Relatable. The, 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 the and the main horror of that movie is not necessarily the thing or the monster. It's the, uh, mm. the way the people start to distrust one another. Yes. Over thinking, oh, well... It could be you. Yeah, you're the thing. No, you're the thing. No, you're the... And, and the paranoia that sets in in this camp, this isolated camp of scientists in Antarctica, and the, and the Arctic environment just adds to the vibe of the movie. Kurt Russell, this was 1978, right after John Carpenter made Halloween, and Kurt Russell, it was right around the time they made Escape from New York. Kurt right, Russell yeah. was in So Kenny program. Loggins went to pursue yeah. his film Big career. Big Beard, Kurt Russell, he plays an alcoholic who saves the day kind of thing, and it's great. Um, the thing. So, recap the list one more time, Zach. All right, we have so Jaws. So, we recommend these, these to you, and if you have more to add, please list them below uh, in the comments, and we love to hear from you. So, write them, list them off. All right. Going backwards, The Thing, Psycho, Silence of the Lambs, The Howl, The Shining, Alien, The Cell, Halloween, Manhunter, Manhunter slash Red Dragon, and Jaws. There's our 10. We had to leave a couple off, but uh, honorable mentions, maybe we'll list in some comments as we watch. So there's a few that, you know, we, we need to see. Uh, Zach and I started watching The Ring yesterday, and that that's a pretty good one, too. Um, and uh, another honorable mention, Night of the Hunter. Zach hasn't seen that yet. One of Don't my favorite classic in. movies. Yeah, but we'll, we're, we'll get to that. Maybe we'll revisit these. Thanks so much for watching. 
And uh, it's also a movie too. Happy Halloween. We're gonna do a real scary face to you now. I'm gonna do my witch impression. Here, here, here. Let's do the witch. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, do the witch. I'll do the witch laugh. Okay. You ready? Keep on rocking. <laughs>